Hey team, Dr. Jack Gordy here, and in this video we're going to be covering the cells of the adaptive immune system, in particular two main cell types, the T cell and the B cell. So let's jump into it. So where are these guys? Well, um, the T cell and the B cell are circulating, definitely, but they're also very prominently in the lymphatic system. So they're in your lymph nodes and in, in that fluid of your lymphatic system. Now, some of them also, uh, it's particularly your T cells, um, are in your tissue, just waiting to respond as well. So they're kind of a little bit all over the body, but when you really, when you think of the adaptive immune system, you should think of the lymphatic system. So let's jump into it. Here we go. So circular, circulatory uh, uh, adaptive cells, they, they are 20 to 40% of your leukocytes, so 20 to 40% of your white blood cells, and we call them a lymphocyte, right? A lymphocyte, which gives you a hint about why we think of the adaptive immune system as primarily the cells of the lymphatic system. Now they do circulate, right? So they're 20 to 40% of your white blood cells, and they are small and they mostly contain nucleus, and they're primarily made up of those T cells and B cells. So lymphocytes are primarily adaptive immune cells making up your T and B cells. Now let's have a look at the T cell. So there are actually two major groups of T cells. They can also be subdivided again, but we'll just look at those two major groups. One is the cytotoxic T cell and the other one is the T helper cell. Now the cytotoxic T cell, we already met this guy in a previous video, it contains a T cell receptor and remember that receptor is unique to each T cell that you have and it has the ability to recognize one antigen from one part of a pathogen, right? So um, uh, for example, here we have a lung epithelial cell infected with the coronavirus, um, a part of the spike protein has been displayed by that uh, lung epithelial cell, and this T cell has a unique T cell receptor, it has the T cell receptor that can recognize that fragment of the spike protein of the coronavirus, and it is inducing, it is releasing a cytotoxic and apoptotic inducing compounds, and that's where the name comes from, cytotoxic T cells go around killing cells, they are toxic to cells, so they go around killing them. The T helper cell is a bit different, but there's a lot of similarities there. They have a T cell receptor. Again, this T cell receptor can recognize um, is unique to each T cell, which is amazing. And it has the ability to recognize one antigen um, that might be, say, a fragment of a spike protein, for example. Now, T helper cells, uh, whereas cytotoxic T cells go around checking all your cells for viral infections, T helper cells mostly work with antigen presenting cells. Now, we met that guy in the previous video. The macrophage and monocytes are examples of professional antigen presenting cells. So these are the pros, right? They are intentionally eating stuff from the extracellular environment and then displaying it on their membrane. Whereas a lung epithelial or another um, a tissue cell, tissue cells we often call a parenchymal cell. So a regular parenchymal cell or tissue cell just samples its cytosol and displays it on its cell surface. Whereas a professional antigen presenting cell intentionally eats stuff from the extracellular environment through phagocytosis and then grabs a fragment of the destroyed pathogen from inside the phagolysosome and displays that intentionally on the outside. That's why they're called professionals. They're out there hunting for antigens in order to display them. So uh, a T helper cell coordinates with a professional antigen presenting cell, and if it recognizes it, rather than killing the macrophage or monocyte, why would it do that? That's an immune cell. Um, rather than killing it, what it does is it releases cytokines. Um, and so it coordinates the immune response with the help of the antigen presenting cell. So yeah, let's jump on that a little bit closer. So here we have um, a, a cytotoxic T cell. Lung epithelial cells have sampled their cytosol. They're displaying it. This T cell contains the one T cell receptor that could recognize this fragment of the spike protein. It's normally very small. So the spike protein is hundreds of amino acids. The fragment that they can recognize is tens of amino acids, not a lot. So it recognizes a fragment of the spike protein and it releases a cytotoxic compound to induce apoptosis and death of the lung epithelial cell. Whereas the T helper cell, it's working with those professionals to release cytokines to coordinate the immune response. Another way to think about a T helper cell, I kind of like thinking about it like this, is it's almost the, the brains of the immune response. 
it's not just recognizing this fragment. It's looking at everything that's going on in the immune response. It's looking at cytokines released by the macrophages and monocytes. It's evaluating how much pathogen we've got, what kind of pathogen we've got. And it's computing this all together to like, it's synthesizing all that information together, the dose, the kind, and the cytokines being released and the tissue damage that's being coordinated. And it evaluates based on all that information, what kind of cytokines do I need to release to coordinate what kind of immune response? Because different pathogens and different things require different immune responses. If you think back to the, imagine a helmet requires a different immune response to a virus, right? Viruses are inside of cells, whereas helmets are giant and are outside of cells. There's two different immune responses you need to deal with that issue, right? You can't do the same thing for those two different massively different kinds of pathogens and so this is where the t helper cell comes in it goes okay we've got a virus at this dose we need this kind of immune response okay we've got a helmet at this dose we need this kind of immune response so to release a different cocktail of cytokines to coordinate a different immune response depending on the pathogens so they help the immune system. They don't do anything directly. A T helper cell does not go out and kill a pathogen directly. All it does is help and coordinate the immune response based on that specific fragment of that protein that it has seen through the T cell receptor there. Um, and then we have the B cell, that's the other major adaptive immune cell. Now, B cells produce antibodies, remember? Now, antibodies are released into your blood as part of hu your humoral immune system, your protein, your soluble immune system, not your cellular immune system. Now, the antibody can be secreted, but it also just sits on the surface of a B cell acting like a receptor, right? Called a B cell receptor. Now, here we have an antibody here, and it's sitting on the surface of the B cell receptor. Now, the antibody has bound to the antigen. So remember, each B cell produces one unique kind of antibody, and this unique kind of antibody can recognize one antigen. Now, that antigen, again, is normally just a fragment, just a few amino acids often, but it can be also carbohydrates, just a very small biological fragment of a molecule, not the whole molecule itself. So actually multiple B cell antibodies might recognize the spike protein, but just different parts of the spike protein, right? So there's more than one B cell that will respond to coronavirus, for example, uh, but it will just be different parts of the spike protein. But anyway, this antibody sitting on the surface of the B cell has recognized its antigen, and that's going to activate that B cell. Now in response to that, it might also, this is where the T cell comes in, it needs that cytokine release from the T helper cell as well. So that tells it, okay, I've got the right cytokines that tells me I need to activate, and I've recognized this antigen, I better start um, uh, to divide and pump out those antibodies. So what happens next is it divides and divides and divides, and they all just start pumping out endless amounts of antibodies here. Now you can see the cytosol gets a bit bigger. Now remember when we looked at that um, H and E stain, the lymphocytes have very small cytosols and very large nuclei. Well, when a B cell becomes activated, its cytosol increases in size, and that's to increase the amount of rough endoplasmic reticulum it's got to increase the amount of protein it can produce because antibodies are protein. So now that really helps it just pump out more and more antibodies into your blood. And because of this different morphology, clinicians typically call them plasma cells because they're full of plasma, cytoplasm. They're full of that extra plasm. Um, yeah, the extra cytoplasm. So we call them plasma cells. But they're really just B cells, effective B cells. So they're just B cells that have been activated. Uh, but clinically, it's kind of important to know that they're called plasma cells. So where does this all happen? I kind of mentioned it kind of happens everywhere, but that one of the major parts, remember, is they're called lymphocytes, and that's because they're often uh, hugely, um, a huge proportion of their population is in the lymphatic system, in particular their lymph nodes, right? So um, remember, I talked about this, you've got your circulatory system, your blood, now fluid leaks out of your circulatory system, particularly at the capillaries, and you end up with extracellular or interstitial fluid, it's sometimes called, um, that flows in the lymphatic vessels, and because of these um, 
uh, valves here. You can see these valves. The fluid fluid can only flow in one direction. Now, in the lymph node is huge numbers of B cells and T cells. And remember, when B cells or T cells get activated, they divide and divide and divide and divide. And this is why when you get an infection, your lymph nodes, which can be under here or under here or in your groinal region, they swell up, right? And that's because you've got a huge number of cells dividing and dividing and dividing, which causes your lymph nodes to grow. And so when a doctor is feeling under here or feeling under there, that's seeing whether your B cells or T cells have divided to the point that your lymph nodes have become swollen and can be palpated just with your fingers, which is kind of amazing here. So here we can see the lymph nodes here. Let's zoom in on a lymph node. Um, so this is a lymph node here, and in, this is using uh, uh, fluorescent labels, which I'm going to cover in the next video. In green, we've got our B cells, um, and in blue, we've got our T cells, and in red, we've got antigen-presenting cells. So you can start to see how these pieces of the puzzles all fit together again. These um, antigen-presenting pre cells, like monocytes and macrophages, are displaying the antigen to the T cell to say, hey, look what I've found. The T cell activates and divides, and then releases cytokines the b cell recognizes an antigen and goes wait t cell should i divide and the t cell releases cytokines to tell the b cell yep if you've recognized an antigen this apc this antigen presenting cell over here said that there's an infection i agree that there's an infection you have now detected an antigen so you agree that there's an infection you should divide and produce antibodies right and so that's the lymph node that's what's going on there but there's another important point and that's the spleen now the spleen is one of those organs you're like wait what does the spleen do right it sits just under oh sorry wrong side just under your stomach there um what does your spleen do well it has a few functions one of its major functions is to filter out damaged or infected red blood cells and we met that in the malaria video that's what your spleen is doing but here is the spleen over here and we can see it is full of b cells and it is full of t cells and it has antigen presenting cells as well and so another role of the spleen is to be the lymph node of the blood right so it does exactly what a lymph node does it's where the antigen presenting cells the t cells and the b cells all interact together to decide whether or not to proliferate and respond to an infection right and, and so that is happening in your spleen as well so your spleen is the lymph node of the blood there's a way to think about it and your lymph nodes are those really important sites of b cell and t cell and antigen presenting cells all interacting together hmm. So the next question is, how did we get these images? So up next in the next video, we're going to go over fluorescent microscopy so we can sort of get an idea on how some of these images were created.